Turn to Romans chapter 11. Romans 11 is where we'll be tonight. <clears throat> Romans chapter 11, and uh, our passage tonight is going to be uh, verses 11 to 24. And uh, two weeks ago, uh, Pastor John uh, preached the beginning portion of Romans, and I'm picking it up from there. Uh, Romans chapter 11. Here's a question. So what about the Jews? What do we do with the Jews in God's plan? And the question and the answer to that is that God is not done with the Jews. As we've heard from Paul since Romans chapter 9, God is not done with the Jews. You know, we're Gentiles and <clears throat> we found salvation through uh, God's word. Uh, we didn't need to go through uh, rituals or traditions. We were not born into the Jewish culture, so we didn't experience God the way that they've experienced God since the Old Testament. We simply went through uh, Jesus Christ to be able to get to God. And that's a blessing because if you, if you study the Old Testament, you see all the rituals and the things that they had to go through. Now, in the, in the Old Testament, it was the same way. You get to God by faith and believing in, in, in God and believing in the, in the coming promise that was going to be the Messiah. But we didn't experience the, the tradition and the religion that was, uh, that was in the Old Testament. And here, here's the thing. Um, as Gentiles living in America, and Gentiles is pretty much anybody that's not a Jew, that's you and I. Uh, unless you're a Jew, then you're, you're a Jew. Um, but if you're a Gentile, and most of us here are Gentiles, and we're, we're living in this country, the culture here in this country is very much individualistic. And what I mean by that is um, follow your dreams, uh, do what you got to do to survive uh, or to be successful, uh, work hard to build a life for yourself, um, invest in your future. And, and with this mindset, it's easy to also live our Christianity in this manner. What I mean by that is focus on your spiritual life. Uh, you come to church, you feed yourself. Uh, go to church and feed yourself. And without trying, we, of, we often think it's God and me. And God does love you. God does love me. God loves the whole world. God loves every single person. But I think what, what we often get tripped up in and what we often just get stuck in, in this mindset is I'm here to satisfy my spiritual life, and that's it. But when you read the Bible, God commands, and, and God didn't just die for you and I. God died for the whole world. And God's heart, and, and as you read um, Romans 11, you'll see that Paul's heart is for the Gentiles, yes, but it's also for the Jews who are unbelieving and who are rejecting God and who are very much in the world. And you and I, as, as Christians, our mindset should also be that God loves me, but he loves the world. Therefore, when I come to church, I should be feeding myself so that I can be stronger spiritually to be able to help others as well, to be able to share the gospel with others and be able to share the gospel uh, with the world. No doubt God cares about us, but he also has a plan that involves the whole world, and that plan involves the Jews. And although we may never meet a Jew or we may never uh, cross a Jew, it's important that we understand what their position and role is in God's plan. And Romans chapter 9 to 11 is Paul just reminding Christians and Gentiles that God is not done with Israel. There is a plan that is put in place, and God will revisit Israel in the future. Now you're blessed now, but remember, you're not just here because, oh, God cares about you, and all, that's all that matters. You're here because it's part of God's plan as well. And so Romans chapter number 11, uh, verse 1 to 10, as a recap, uh, Pastor John elaborated on the Jewish remnant that believes in Jesus. Uh, in the Old Testament, um, majority of the Jews did not believe in, in God the way that they should have, uh, especially in, in the New Testament. We get to Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the Gospels, and even the, the whole New Testament, you see that there's a majority, there's a, there's a huge majority of Jewish, uh, the Jewish nation that do not believe in Jesus, that do not believe in God. But there were a few that believed. 
Um, there's the people that started the church in the beginning, the disciples, the apostles. They believed in, in, in Jesus, and they, they are a part of that remnant. Um, Pastor John uh, elaborated on the remnant that was in Elijah's day, uh, when Elijah thought that he was the only one that was serving God. But in fact, there were 7,000 others that God had reserved and had left that were still faithful that we're still serving God. And, and, and that's the first part of Romans chapter number 11. In Romans chapter number uh, 11, from verse 11 to 24, here Paul is going to discuss the roles of Jewish unbelief and Gentile uh, inclusion in God's plan. So we'll dive right in just so we can get into these verses here. Romans chapter number 11, verses number 11 to 14. Uh, we'll read this portion first. The Bible says this, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather, through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? For I speak to you, Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office, if by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are, in my, uh, which are my flesh, and might save some of them. And so let me pause there. What is Paul saying here? In this passage, Paul explains that Israel's stumble led to Gentiles receiving salvation, and his hope really is to make the Jews jealous and eventually lead them also to embrace salvation. Um, Paul emphasizes his role in this process and his desire to really save some of the, his Jewish brethren and, and, uh, and his nation. And we'll dig deeper into this verse. But verse number 11, uh, let's define some terms here. Uh, verse number 11, uh, Paul uses stumbling and falling as some terms here. And stumble uh, has the idea of to err or to make a mistake. Um, and then the next, uh, the next one you see is the word fall. The word fall there means to perish or to come to an end, which means to cease. Um, and then you'll go down, and he also uses the word fall again. He says, through their fall, and this idea just has the idea of a lapse or deviation from truth or uprightness. So let's put that in the, in the verse again. He says, I say then, have they stumbled, which is to err or to make a mistake, that they should fall, which is to perish or come to an end. And here's what Paul is saying. Are they disqualified? Are they out of the picture? Have they ceased to, in this sense, have they come to the, have they done something to the point where God just says, you know what, I'm done with you guys, it's, it's game over. Is that what Paul is saying? And that, that's not what Paul is saying. What Paul is saying is that God is not done with Israel. The word stumble here uh, carries the idea of um, when you stumble over a rock, there's, there's sometimes where you stumble and you don't fall. You're just stumbling. And sometimes you're stumbling and you're just rolling for, like, you're just in the air. You're walking and it's, it's silly. It looks funny. But you're stumbling and then for some reason you catch yourself and you're, you're okay. This is the idea of stumbling that Paul is using with, with this word. Israel has stumbled, but they haven't fallen to the point where God is saying, nope, they're done. And so that's important because... What Paul is saying here is that God is not done with Israel. You might think that he's done with Israel because you're there and he's talking to the Gentiles and he's talking to the Gentiles and he's looking at these Jewish people who are rejecting Jesus Christ and who are persecuting the, the Gentile Christians, but even the Jewish Christians. And, and, and he's reminding them, look, you might think that God is done with them, but the reality is that he's not done with them. And, and he's going to elaborate and uh, go more into that. In verse number 12 to 14, the question that we have to ask as we read is, is there a purpose for their stumbling? And Paul actually answers this in, in verses 12 to 14. He says, through their fall, salvation is come to the Gentiles. And also, through their fall, um, the Gentiles being saved are able to provoke Israel to jealousy so that, in turn, the Jews can get saved as well. Um, I want to go back to the Old Testament and, and really uh, kind of give you some verses from there that will help us to understand what God's plan was in the beginning and then what God's plan is now uh, dealing with the Gentiles. In Genesis chapter 12, if you would turn there, Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to uh, verse 3, this was the promise that God had given to Abraham. Uh, 
The Bible says this in verse number 1, Genesis 12. Now the Lord hath said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Notice that last phrase there, in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. God's plan was to use Israel to bless all nations. That's, that, that was his plan in the Old Testament. All families of the earth is, is talking about the Gentiles, all of us. And, and that was his plan. Obviously, they failed uh, to be used, and Israel didn't bless the nation. Uh, we know that by the end of the Old, Old Testament, uh, they were not uh, prospering. They were not succeeding. And in the New Testament, you just see them being uh, uh, controlled by the Romans. And there's just a lot that just shows that they were not successful in, in doing what they were uh, called to do. Um, but then now, as we get into Romans chapter 11 and into the New Testament, we see God really flipping that, that script that he had in the beginning, that plan. And so uh, what we see is that God is now using the Israel's fall to bring salvation to us Gentiles. And now he's going to use the Gentiles to pretty much bless Israel, to cause them to have jealousy and then come back and say, and now God is going to use Gentiles to be able to bless his na- the nation that he has chosen. Uh, turn to Deuteronomy chapter number 31, verse 21. Deuteronomy 31, and verse number 21. The Bible says this, They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people, and I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. And so God had already said in the Old Testament that he's going to use Gentiles to provoke his people to jealousy. And uh, Paul confirms that again in Romans chapter number 10. Romans 10 verse 19, he says, But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses said, I will provoke you, provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation I will anger you. And so what we see here from the Old Testament of what Paul is saying is that God is not done with Israel, and Israel did fail what they were supposed to do, but God still has this plan, and this plan now involves Gentiles, and the Gentiles are now going to be used to also cause the Israel to to be blessed, to to also receive the blessing that they were first uh, supposed to have in the beginning. Paul, uh, Paul goes on to say, now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, back in Romans chapter number 11 here, how much more their fullness, for I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office, if by any means I may provoke them to, provoke to emulation them which are my flesh and might save some of them. Um, Paul's heart here, you can see it again. You can, you can hear it from what he's saying. He said he wants them to see the blessings that are coming upon the Gentiles, uh, the Gentiles that should have been there so that it might make them jealous and cause them to want in and hopefully get saved. Paul is saying, look, I want, I want what I'm doing here with, with you guys, the Gentiles that, that are not supposed to be part of this whole uh, plan, according to our knowledge. But it was always in God's plan. But what I want the Jews to understand is that there's so much blessings that are coming upon the Gentiles, and these blessings were promised to the Jewish nation, and it was supposed to be theirs, and I, I want them to see that so they can see it and look here and be, be caused to want to come back and say, wow, I want that blessing. I want the blessing that was supposed to be mine and, and be provoked to jealousy in that manner. And that's what Paul is saying, and you can really hear his heart there. Paul is ministering to the Gentiles, but he still cares about his people. And you actually see that when he's going through the churches as he's writing these letters. Every uh, town that he goes to, uh, he did what Jesus did. He would go to um, the synagogues first, and he would preach to the the, the Jewish people. And then they would just reject him and reject the message. And so after that, he would go, and then he would preach to the Gentiles. Um, And then eventually, uh, Paul was... uh, uh, was, um, told to go to the Gentiles and be a missionary to the Gentiles. So Paul wants Israel to have the kind of jealousy that would cause them to want and return to God. I'm sure there are Jews living here in Hawaii, and, but you may, never, you may never meet a Jew in your life. Uh, 
but you do have neighbors that are of a different religion. And this is where I want to apply this text to us. Um, you have family members who believe in different gods. You have family members who believe in a different religion or who practice a different religion. Uh, you have uh, family members uh, or you have friends who don't even believe in God. And the challenge here is after interacting with them for so long, could they be jealous of your relationship with God? Could they look at you and say, you know what? I want what this person has. Would they be able to say, I want, what th- I want the joy that this, that this person has? Their words are seasoned with grace. Their joy is un- uh, unexplainable. Their eyes are full of compassion. If they were to ter- come to our God and they don't believe in God, if they were to come to God and say, God, I have met one of yours and I want whatever he has. Would that be your testimony? Would that, are you causing jealousy in the sense of, I want these people to, I may not be preaching it with my words, and I may not be saying it out loud, but my actions and my love for people and the way that I treat people, it preaches the gospel in that way. And could, could you say that people are going to fall in love with God because of how you are? It's a type of jealousy that brings people to God. In verse number 15 to verse number 21, um, Paul's use of an olive tree is, is, is here. We'll, we'll see the, the imagery here. But he uses the, the olive, tree, olive tree analogy to depict the roles of both Gentiles and Jew, Jews within God's overarching plan. In Romans uh, 15, or 11 verse 15, the Bible says this, For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be? but life from the dead. For if the first fruits be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree, uh, boast not against the branches. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear, for if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not uh, thee. What is Paul saying here? And Paul is using uh, the analogy of the olive tree here to explain the relationship between uh, the Jews and the Gentiles in God's plan of salvation. In In verse 15, he begins by explaining that if the rejection of the Jews has led to the Gentiles coming back to God and being able to find salvation, then their acceptance back into God's favor will be even more significant. What Paul is saying is, look, God has rejected the Jews, and that has caused you guys to be blessed, you Gentiles to be blessed. But think of it this way. How much more amazing would it be if God has accepted all the Jews back? Like, wouldn't it be even more amazing for you Gentiles? And, and that's what Paul is asking here. Like, if, if their rejection causes you blessings, like, I mean, if their curse causes you blessings, wouldn't their blessing cause you even more blessings? That, that's where Paul is going uh, here with this. And it's important to note here that Paul hinted that Israel would eventually be welcomed back. And we'll see this uh, next week as well as, um, as Pastor Caleb concludes uh, Romans chapter number 11. But we'll see that, God is definitely going to bring the, Israel, uh, the Jews back into his plan. Now, Paul implies that this restoration is an integral part of Israel's identity. And despite their current uh, separation due to rejecting Christ, Israel is destined to remain God's chosen people. And that's the big idea that Paul is trying to drive home here with these, uh, this passage, is that God is not done with Israel, and God is going to do something with the Israelites later. But for now... He's, he's, with, he's dealing with us Gentiles. Paul offers two illustrations in verse uh, number 16 down uh, to make this point. First, he said in verse number 16, For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy, and if the root be holy, so are the branches. Um, what Paul is using here, Paul is using, is referencing Israel's practice of offering the first dough made from each year's harvest 
as a loaf of bread to the Lord. And so the first fruit is, is referring to these. Um, you, you, we find this in Numbers chapter number 15, in verse number 20. The Bible says this, Ye shall offer, offer up a cake of the first of your dole for an heave offering, as ye do the heave offering of the, of the threshing floor, so shall ye heave it. Of the first of your dough ye shall give unto the Lord, and heave offering in your generations. So that bit of dough offered as the first fruits to the Lord was set apart. It was holy. Uh, its holiness conferred holiness unto everything else that was to come. They, they tested the first fruits. Because it was good, they, they just said, okay, the rest of the, the harvest is going to be good because this first fruit are good. And so, and then the next uh, illustration he uses is the olive tree. He says, the nature of branches is determined by the root from which they grow. Uh, in verse 16 there, uh, the basic Greek word for the word root here is riza, uh, which is referring to the core part of the plant and from the surface and reaching below the soil. Uh, it, it, it's where the, the source of the nutrients are coming from. And so if the root is holy, Paul implies that the branches will be holy as well. So let me explain further. Paul's larger point seems to be that Israel's first fruits were the patriarchs, or um, others have said that it was um, the first Christians that were Jewish. So this would have been uh, Matthew, Mar uh, Mark. Um, no, Mark wasn't a Jew. It was um, Paul. Paul was a Jew. And so the, the, the foundation of the church in, uh, in Jerusalem, when it was started, they were, the Christians were first Jewish people. And so... The first fruits were the Jewish people, but you could also refer it back to the patriarchs, which would be Abraham and the ones that, that were given the promise of God. And because they're the first fruit, then the rest of the batch would be holy as well, it is what Paul is illustrating here. And the point is, God set those first Israelites apart as his people. He made them holy in a sense, and in that same sense, Paul says their holiness would determine the ultimate nature of Israel. That's why she must eventually return to a right relationship with God, which now comes through faith in Christ. And so Paul wants us to understand that God is not done with Israel, and he's using illustrations to be able to illustrate that. In verse number 17, the Bible says this, And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou, being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Um, this verse here is, is pretty wild. Uh, you'll get that later. Uh, what God has done to include us is amazing. Uh, it's, it's natural to take cultivated branches and graft into other cultivated branches, but it's unnatural to take a wild olive tree and graft it into a cultivated um, tree. But that is exactly what God did. And the imagery we might not get right away, um, but just imagine a, a good tree that's, that's healthy, that's just there, and then you just go off the side and you have this, this bad tree, this is what you would call it, and you just take a branch from there and you would just uh, graft it into this good tree. That, that's unnatural. That's not something that the farmers would do. That's not something that uh, they would do to in, that, in that practice or in that culture, but that's exactly what God did. He took the Gentiles, which was us, and he grafted us into the promises that God had already given to the Israelites in the Old Testament. Uh, the root here, the root represents the promises God made to Israel's patriarchs, which sustain all believers. This root signifies the heritage and spiritual foundation of the Jewish people from which the branches the, derive their nourishment and identity. And, so, and then the next few verses... Paul is going to warn Gentiles about the attitudes they were having against the Jews. In verse number 18 to 19, the Bible says this, Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Thou would say then, the branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. Um, some Gentiles uh, might have believed that, uh, or they might have been resentful to the Jews because of persecution by the Jewish leaders. And so it's... It, it's understandable to see why some of the Gentiles would kind of have a negative outlook on the Jews because majority of them are actually opposing them, opposing the, the, the Christians. But Paul reminds them that the relationship with God is only possible because of his grace and through faith in Jesus. And the branches do not hold the root, but it is the root that holds the branches. And you and I, Gentiles, we were wild olive branches, yet they were the natural branches but God had chosen to, 
put us into that, that olive tree as well. And so here's the connection. Gentile believers should recognize Israel's ongoing special relationship with God. And to understand this better, we go back to the Old Testament where God has chosen Israel to be the nation that just because he wanted to choose Israel. And it is through that nation that he's going to bless the world. Obviously, Israel failed. Some of the branches were cut off, but they still had that remnant, as Pastor John mentioned in Romans chapter 11, verse 1 to 10. There's still some Jewish branches that are still left on that olive, olive tree. And those, those branches that were cut off were part of that promise first, but because they did not believe in Jesus Christ, they were cut off. Um, and then we, the Gentiles, were not originally pl- uh, part of that plan. We were going to be part of it later because we're going to be part of when the Jews are blessed and then we're blessed. But because they failed, God has chosen to just put us in directly. And we're grafted into that, that tree. And the only way that we're grafted into that tree, as Paul is saying, and he's uh, contrasting with the, with the Jews... The Jews were cut off because of unbelief, but we're grafted in because of belief. It's because of faith. And so the only way that we have a right to be on this tree is through faith in Jesus Christ. And what that means is it it, it, it just diminishes any boasting that we would have of looking at, at the Jews and saying, look, you were cut off just so I could be part of this. I deserve to be here. In that sense. But what Paul is, is trying to remind them is, look, you're right. They were cut off, but they were cut off because of unbelief. And here's the other thing. Um, Paul is saying the, the Jews were cut off because of unbelief. Uh, I, I think it's easy for us to understand, uh, kind of imagine or think that God purposely cut off the Jews. We're, we're thinking, huh, God must have not liked the Jews, so he just cut them off. But what the reality is that God cut the the Jews off the the tree because they chose to not believe in Jesus Christ. Unbelief is what gets them cut off from that tree. It is faith in Jesus Christ that gets somebody to be grafted into that tree. And you and I as Gentiles, if we have accepted Christ as our Savior, we are now grafted into that tree as well. And what that means is we got there not because of what we've done, but because of Jesus Christ. It's a supernatural thing that happened, and it is only because of what God has done for us. In verse number 20 and 21, the Bible says, Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spare not the uh, natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. And when Paul is just reminding Gentiles that we are to be humble when it comes to this, I, this, this topic because we didn't put ourselves there. It was God that did it. This verse, hum, uh, this verse should humble Gentile Christians as the only difference between them and the broken branches is faith in Jesus. And, and the good thing about this, and this is what Paul is getting to as well, is that these branches that are cut off, they can actually be regrafted in when they actually realize who Jesus Christ is and have faith and put their faith in Jesus. And so if the, if the Jews finally have faith in Jesus, they too will be grafted into that tree. And so Paul warns against pride, specifically thinking, if you deserve it while others don't, then this is, this is what Paul is warning against. And I wonder if we've had this mindset before, just thoughts or actions that say that person doesn't deserve to be saved. Or... Uh, nope, he would never be used of God. Just look at him. Just thoughts that just negate people's salvation just because we're judging how they are or the actions that they take. Or I'm saved because, I, because look at all, all I've done and you need to reconsider what salvation is. But what we should do instead is be humble and have a humble response. We should have it when it comes to our position in God's redemptive plan. Not, it is not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. He supernaturally grafted us into the olive tree, and, and it should cause us to go, wow, since I got saved, then that means that my neighbor can get saved too. Because look how easy it is to be grafted into the street. It is simply by salvation, by, by believing in Jesus Christ. 
And it should cause us to say, you know what? If, if God can save me, then I can go and, and share the gospel with anybody else because anybody else can get saved. Because if they believe in Christ, then they can get saved as well if they believe in Christ. Verse 22 to 24, <clears throat> the Bible says this, Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity, but toward thee, goodness. If thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? What Paul is saying here is, is he's saying God is able to graft all of Israel back into the olive tree. But he gives a few warnings as he says this. In verse 22, he says, uh, Paul explains that, <clears throat> or Paul urges believers to reflect on both the goodness and sever severity of God. He highlights how God's attitude varies depending on the response of individuals. Uh, first, Paul acknowledges that God's severity towards, towards those who fell uh, was due to their unbelief. And this sternness is a consequence of their unbelief and disobedience. But on the other hand, if you're saved and you've, if you've been grafted in because of your faith in Jesus Christ, then what, what the goodness and the kindness of God is to us is we have received God's grace and we are now included into God's family because of this faith in Jesus Christ. But Paul continues to warn, as he said in the previous verses, Paul issues a warning to the, gen to the Gentiles, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. And that verse may seem um, confusing at first when you look at it in verse number, 20, uh, verse number um, 22. He says at the end of it, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. The Bible says this, um, or when, when I was studying this, uh, at first, I, I was trying to figure out what does that mean? Does that mean that we can lose our salvation? Does that mean that if, if we don't continue in this way that, um, that I'm going to lose my salvation in that, in that manner? But the word cut off here does not carry the idea of, um, of losing your salvation. Paul is still referring to uh, the Gentiles as a nation. And uh, the issue at hand is not salvation but what the following verses show is that God had cut off some of Israel for their rejection of him, and he grafted the Gentiles in. And as he's referring to the Gentiles here as a group or as a nation, uh, if the Gentiles, what Paul is saying is if the Gentiles act as coldly and stubbornly towards God as Israel had, God is more than willing and able to deem them cut off and suffer as a result. And the context here is not about eternity but the relationship and communion with God. And we see, let, me, let me give you examples to clarify that. Because we see this in, in churches and even in nations. There are churches that um, in the 1900s were on fire for God. And they are blessed because they're on fire for God and they're doing great things. But then generations pass and the word of God is no longer as strong as it should have been in that church. And eventually you see that church is now not as effective as they should be, and even we even see them die off. There's nations where uh, we, there are strong Christian nations, but then you see just um, they're not doing what the Bible says, and they're no longer on fire for God, and you see that nation just uh, crippling away because their faith is no longer in God. And, and this is the idea that, that Paul is saying here, is that the relationship that that church once had or the relationship that that nation once had is no longer... Uh, is, is cut off now. Natural branches st uh, are still on, and the remnant that were, st that were saved are still on. And, and so here's the, here's the contrast. The unbelievers, the Jewish unbelievers, were cut off because of unbelief. But they will now, they will be saved, they will be grafted in once again if they put their trust in Jesus Christ. Verse number 23, the Bible says this, and they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. And here's where Paul is going as he's uh, concluding this portion of Romans. He says, Israel can, and we'll, we'll, we'll find out later that they will still be grafted into that tree. Verse number 24, for if thou wert cut off, 
the olive tree which is wild by nature and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these which be the natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree? And what Paul wants uh, Gentile Christians to understand are, are two things here. That first of all, God can graft back the Jewish people into his family through faith in Jesus. And then secondly, Gentile believers should eagerly anticipate this happening. After all, God cut them from the wild olive tree and grafted them into uh, his own cultivated tree through faith in Christ. Therefore, God can craft back into his tree the branches that grew there in the first place. And, and here's, here's, here's where Paul is going with all of this. And I hope you see Paul's heart. But Paul's heart here is that he really cares about the Israelites, is that he really cares about the Jews. And what he's seeing in this, in this um, culture, in this, especially in the churches, that's why he's writing to them, that's why he's having to warn them, is he's seeing the Gentiles that are now getting more in number, and there's more Gentile Christians probably at this point, and there's still a remnant, there's some Jewish believers, but it's, it's not as much as what the population was in that time. And, and so what you probably can see what's happening is that Paul is warning them, look, it might look like that, but when you study scripture and you see the promises that God had given Israel in the, in, in the Old Testament, those promises are eternal, and God is not done with Israel. And, and, and Paul is reminding this, these churches and this church in, Romans, in Rome to, uh, to have compassion for the Israelites, to pray for them, to look out for them and say, look, you're blessed because of them. Because they were the chosen nation of Israel, they're cut off, and the plan now is to graft you guys in, and as, as soon as all the, the numbers of people that are grafted in is, is done, God is going to go back to the Israelites, and he's going to focus on the Israelites, and they're going to be blessed. And after that, there's going to be more blessings because of that. But Paul's heart is really, do not count the Israelites out. Do not count the Jews out of this because God still cares about them. But I think we can, we can apply that to our lives even today and say don't count anybody out from God's plan. Don't count anybody out from God's love for the world. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter number 2, in verse number 3 and 4, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will, ha- who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. God's heart is for all to be saved. And for us to look out and say, this person can get saved because they look like they qualify, but this person, uh, they're far gone. That would be like the Gentiles to the Jews and how they're, they're, they're negating the Jews because of what the, the Jews were doing. Our, our, our power is not to save people. That's what God does. What we're commanded to do is just to share the gospel with people And God is the one that does the saving. And God wants Gentiles and Jews to be saved. But we need to remember that the Jews are still God's people. And therefore, even in this day, we should still pray for them. We should still keep them in mind and, and continue to pray that one day they would all understand that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Because how amazing would that be that that last time when we actually see all of God's plan coming into fruition. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for being so good. And uh, we just pray that you would just continue to help us to study your word and uh, that we would understand uh, what you have given us here in in Paul's writing to the church in Rome and the churches in Rome. And I pray that you would just help us to be able to take some of these and apply it to our lives and uh, be able to see just your heart for uh, not just your, your nation, but for, for every nation, Lord, and for us Gentiles, and uh, just for people, Lord. And help us to be reminded of, of the love that you've given us specifically, uh, and that we would be humble enough to understand that we didn't, we didn't uh, deserve it. Uh, but I pray that you would help us to be able to share uh, your love to others, and that they would be able to be included in that plan as well. Father, we love you so much, and we thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.